I think the interesting thing about this approach to writing is that it did well with students who had learning disabilities as well. This was not just for the average uh, college student. This method has been used at the elementary, junior high, and high school level. I said reluctant learner because we don't always know whether there's a learning disability or teaching disability. <laughs> so rather than to assume it's a student, you know, we'll share this blame. So common problems and possible solutions. Some do's. I have five do's here. One was adhere to the hierarchy of skills when teaching expository writing. The hierarchy of skills were the uh, reading skills that um, I use when we talk about um, reading levels. Uh, that's another topic, but it's important in writing as well. To limit sentences linked to six to nine words. <laughs> another, use sentence combining to teach the use of colons and semicolons. So there's a reason now to teach it if you're combining these short sentences. Always identify some strengths in students' writings. Uh, use diagramming to teach and assess students' writings. Uh, telling them what the problem is is not always helpful. If you can diagram, and that's what the diagrammatic analysis in the test that we use, enables a student to see. Oh, you, when you say transition, oh, I see, I'm trying to get from here to here. And that's a visual that enables them to connect that. Some don'ts. Avoid mixing various forms of writing, various genres. If you're going to do poetry, do poetry. If you're going to do expository, do expository. If you're going to talk about teaching how to write in the newspaper, all this is separate. It's like skiing downhill, cross country, and water skiing. It's all skiing, but it requires different terrain, different equipment, different clothing, different skills, and they're not interchangeable. Don't limit students' theme to a specific number of words. I think that's the worst thing. Write a 500 word, so you got them counting their words. No. No. If you can help them work with their thesis statement or their first power sentence, that will begin to help them limit what they're going to write. Because if there's one, uh, we know that if there's one claim, they have to write at least three sentences, <laughs> possibly three paragraphs. <laughs> But that's limiting in and of itself. Don't give equal weight to grammar, spelling, organization, and developmental skills. If a kid misspells there one time, you don't have to take it off the next 10 times he does it. He probably has trouble with that word. <laughs> and he'll probably know it by the time you finish. Uh, avoid non-instructive criticism when correcting students' papers.